corporate governance reforms are being ruled out in Japan, though the government is still leading the cause, some are arguing the most dramatic shift is happening within individual companies. Prize-winning economist Dr. Hajun Chen joins me with his thoughts. Now, Japan, of course, suffers a bit from a reputation of being risk-averse, but given these new reforms, doctor, do you think that this reputation is still granted? Japan's traditional corporate uh, governance system makes it uh, quite difficult to uh, change it quickly because unlike in the, the Anglo countries, it's not just the shareholders uh, who have uh, say in how the companies uh, run. So the professional managers uh, do not just cater for the shareholders, but uh, they also uh, think about the employees, the local community, their suppliers. So it's a system that is designed to create a diverse range of stakeholder interests. Perhaps this traditional modes of governance that has worked in the past just needs to be adapted and moving towards an Anglo-Saxon capitalism model is not necessarily the way ahead. Corporate governance is uh, one thing that uh, they really need to be careful about changing because the financial crisis uh, in the Western world uh, in the last several years, that has been actually caused by partly by the poor corporate governance system because what happened in these countries is that in the last uh, two, three decades have uh, created this system that I call in the, my latest book, uh, Economics at uh, the User's uh, Guide, uh, an unholy alliance between short-term shareholders and and professional managers. It's a system where short-term shareholders uh, demand profit maximization uh, from very short-term point of view and uh, they are ready to leave the company when uh, they don't get a uh, high profit in the short run. So what the professional managers have been doing is uh, to generate a lot of short-term profit by not investing. Of course, uh, five, ten years later, your company will be in trouble, but uh, by the time the manager may be managing some other company. Short-termism, as you mentioned, a real problem. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, what Abe is trying to institute is to get the capital expenditures higher, right? We have seen Japanese companies hold on to amounting to about roughly $1.9 trillion in cash yeah. just sitting there, right? So what sectors do you think, looking at the Japanese mm -hmm. model that's in place right now, would really be able to engage and bring about swift reforms that will allow these companies to really bounce back and perhaps yeah. not face the same yeah. short-termism yeah. that their Western counterparts have That's seen right, in yeah. the decades, uh, you know, prior no, no, to No, no, I crisis. totally agree that the Japanese uh, companies are sitting on necessarily large cash pile and uh, something has to be done. But my view is that uh, if you try to solve that by introducing American, British type of uh, corporate governance system, most of this cash will be just uh, uh, distributed to shareholders uh, in the form of uh, the dividends and share buybacks. Now, some of it uh, would be justified, but you know, if you don't be careful, you could create the British American system where companies retain only 5-10% of their profit, which leave them uh, very little to invest and that uh, affect uh, their long-term productivity. So Japan has to play on its uh, strength in machine-based industry. It's still the world leader in the robot industry. It's uh, still the, got the leading car company Toyota and many other machine-based companies that are doing extremely well. It's also very good at heavy the equipment and infrastructure. So I think exactly because uh, these are sectors that uh, need a lot of investment, you need to do something to incentivize these companies to invest more for building. For the future uh, ahead, that's right. right yeah. The, Absolutely. Absolutely. more sustainable uh, economy and opening uh, new chapters in the uh, industries like uh, robots. So let's look at some of those dominating tech companies. Mm -hmm. Hitachi, for instance, has recently moved its focus away from its less unprofitable sectors and more on new growth sectors, such as railways and infrastructure. Why I think that is key is that something that the prime minister hasn't instituted. He's not telling them to change their strategy. The company had to look internally and decide what was the way ahead, right? So given that, do you think the productivity reforms that Japan really needs should be focused more internally in a case-by-case -case specific basis rather than Abe being held as, you know, the, the key generator of reform in the country? Yeah, I agree with that uh, because, uh, you know, the, the exact structure of corporate governance uh, you need depend on the, the industry. Let's not forget, uh, you know, I mean, that some Japanese 
companies have already tried to reform their corporate uh, governance system in the Anglo-American way in the last couple of decades. You know, the best example is Sony, and Sony has been mm -hmm. in big trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, paradoxically, companies like Toyota and Canon, which that uh, of course are modified Focus a little bit, but yeah, yeah, that's yes. right. That uh, held on to their traditional model, focus on their core competencies. Uh, these are companies that have done well. So I think uh, we have to be very careful in drawing this uh, general conclusion that you know that because uh, Japanese economy have been in trouble for the last two decades, they have to change everything. But on the flip side as well, we have to think about you know the traditional hierarchical forms of governance that he's really trying to attack, right? Though these companies are seeking innovations in sectors that they've really succeeded in, the way ahead is also to make sure that the company itself is governed by a body that's going to focus on productivity, yeah. right? So for instance, shareholders, looking at who is a shareholder, who is at the board level, do you think that he is pushing hard enough? You have to create an incentive for the shareholders uh, to think for the long term. So I have uh, made uh, various proposals, uh, for example, you should uh, give uh, more voting power for long term shareholders. If you share, uh, hold the share for less than a year, you get one vote, but if you hold it for three years, you get uh, five votes. You need to bring in a structure that, that, that restrains this uh, downside of uh, old boy network while uh, giving uh, incentives uh, for shareholders to behave in a more long-term oriented way.